Hello everyone, I'm back here with another update, still in Winchester, Virginia here. Um, today I am visiting Shenandoah Valley Battlefields National Historic District. This is the scene of a Civil War battle on September 19th, 1864. So it was a prior scene of a battle that was where there were a lot of casualties, but I'm not coming here for that. I'm coming here just to get out in a natural preserved area. But yeah, there is a lot of history to this area. This is um, a trail that will take us into that scene of a Civil War battle. So this is a parking area. This was the scene of the largest battle ever fought in this valley, Shenandoah Valley, for Earth's seesaw struggle. So the Confederates gradually forced back into the L-shaped line north and east of Winchester a final attack by federal infantry and cavalry broke the defenders' lines and sent them whirling through Winchester. So here is a map of these campaigns. And this is the trail that leads into this. Again, I'm coming out here because it's the closest natural area to where I'm at. Um, I'm not really into war or battles or anything. So the situation is a truck, there, there is a part that's needed that they're not going to be able to get till tomorrow. Unfortunately, um, at least till tomorrow, so. The estimate is doubled since yesterday, um, but that's normal. Things like that usually happen in these situations. Um, so, play this by year, and then they, you know, to complete the test on everything, they need this part that has to do with the pressure and resolving that issue. And then once everything is normalized, they can run a complete test on the system, see if there's anything else wrong, and in the long run, this will save me aggravation of going back out for a couple more weeks and then having yet another code come up. So if everything is resolved now, do a complete test on the system. If there's anything else wrong, it will come up on this test, or should. And that's not just with the system, but with the motor, everything else. They're going to do a total test on everything. But the, again, to complete this test, they got to have all the fault codes 
removed before they can complete this test. So that has to be resolved. So if they're not done by tomorrow, I'm thinking about, um, there is a real nice place down in Front Royal, which is about an hour away, that rents out kayaks. And I'm thinking about doing a trip down the San Andorra River in a kayak. Um, if the truck doesn't get done for a few days, I'm thinking about a multi-day trip. Um, there is 160 miles of river to, pa to paddle down available. So pretty much, I can even spend a week out on the river if I wanted. But of course I would need the supplies and everything. So I'm not sure yet, but it depends on how things go tomorrow, if they're going to be done or not. So I am staying at a motel tonight, and I stayed last night nearby so and this place was uh, about probably a 10 minute walk from the motel Obviously, to get to Front Royal, which is over an hour, I think an hour away from here, I'd have to either rent a car out or get an Uber ride to get there. Not sure which I'll do yet, if I do decide to go that way. So there is a view of the mountains in the distance. Uh, I'm looking toward the West Virginia line there. And I-81 runs right over there in that direction. So the situation with the building is that guy is still interested. He is working on finding an electrician that will do the work in exchange for a share of the building. He seems to have a person in mind that might be interested, so... My proposal is going to be... I'm going to allow him to buy into a share of the building with no money down if he agrees to absorb all the expenses that will be involved in bringing this building up to code over three to five years. That is my proposal. In exchange for $700 a month um, for, from now on. If he pays me $700 a month, he will have a share of the building. I will keep a share He will get everything else from the rents and everything else, but he will have to pay all the expenses of operating the building. And all I will ask for from him is $700 a month. 
he will have to he will not have to put any money down his only requirement will be is to pay me that amount every month from now on and he will be able to do whatever he wants with that building that is my proposal I have not presented it to him yet Obviously, if he defaults on it, doesn't pay it, then I get full possession of the building back. So I'm going to see, I'm going to present that to him if he's really serious and So the electrician, whoever he finds, will have a share. He will have a share. I will have a share. And that is what I will ask of, of um, having my share intact. Thus, I will not have to worry about anything, any of the expenses for the building or anything else. And he will get a share without having to put any money down. He did say he's cash poor right now, but is interested. So here's a side trail that goes off. I think I'm going to explore this trail, see where it goes. This looks like an elm tree right in front of me. But um, apparently the tenants are still all there. None of them have actually moved out yet, although I, the top people on third floor have found another place, so um, they should be moving out soon. Um, but the other three units... Uh, remain to be seen whether I will have to go all the way to court to get them out or not. So there are some open fields here. A view of the Shenandoah Ridge Line, where off in the distance there to the east. Um, and the Appalachian Trail runs along that ridge line. There was some rain that moved through overnight, but it cleared out pretty quick this morning and must have been a cold front that came through last night and 
really dry, comfortable, cool air in place. Uh, temperature is only about 80 right now, or maybe a bit above that. Humidity is very low. I do not have a weather update today because, for some reason, satellite imagery is not... I've uh, been reloading, so... Um, I'm looking at old data from yesterday still. So, it appears those two systems out in the Atlantic I mentioned yesterday is just one huge circulation that at the moment is not developing in a huge way into anything. Another big circulation over Venezuela I mentioned yesterday. Most of the circulation is now over Venezuela itself. Um, so that continues to move westward, probably will eventually um, emerge out into the Pacific. It will go into Central America and then bring more rain to Central America in the coming days. So this section here is the Huntsbury Farm. So this is the remnants of this farm, 75 yards in front of you, stand the remnants of this farm. And it covered 400 acres at the time of the battle I mentioned earlier. And this was part of a wave of Germans and Scot-Irish immigrant families moved here in the mid-late 18th century. And at the time of this battle, 17 people lived here on this farm, nine family members and eight enslaved African Americans. This farm raised 1,500 bushels of Indian corn, 500 bushels of oats, 250 of wheat, 150 of Irish potatoes, 120 of rye, 100 pounds of wool, 624 pounds of butter, and 35 tons of hay. This farm produced 2 pounds of hops, 10 pounds of beeswax, and 100 pounds of honey. Livestock included 10 horses, 18 head of cattle, 37 sheep, and 30 swine. And so that was basically what was here back then in 1860. Um, battles did rage across this farm, but there are no accounts preserved of the family's experiences during that time. And this farm remained with the family until 2009 when it was purchased by the Shenandoah Valley Battlefields organization. So yeah, the remains of this farm are probably where those trees are. There is a, what appears to be a chimney, and that's all that's left of it. And the trail goes off to the right. So this is a life in bondage, slavery on this farm. And much of the labor came from those who were enslaved, owned by the family. But there is little record of the enslaved people that worked it. Um, and this is a little bit of a few clues here. I mean, obviously all the slaves were black, African Americans. And 
it says in 1860 there were 24,779 slaves in the Shenandoah Valley. Over 20% of the valley's population were slaves. There were no names recorded of who these slaves were. Um, no clue as to what the, their fate was and what became of them during and after the Civil War. And whether any left the farm during the conflict to seek freedom. So there's no records as to what happened to all these people who were enslaved here at that time. The trail continues in this direction. So I'm going to end the video. I hope you found this um, interesting, this historical account of this place. And I will be doing further exploring. Uh, there goes a monarch butterfly. Um, and again, this is um, Huntsbury Farm, it's called. So that will be it. I will be back soon with another update.